The album was uh, recorded in Neptune's Kitchen, which is the name of my home recording studio. Neptune is the one of the gods of music, and the kitchen is somewhere you cook something up. Well, actually, my wife was expecting a baby, and um, I think instinctively we wanted to head back to uh, our roots so I could record the album and, and change nappies at the same time. I didn't choose the collaborators, they kind of chose me in a sense, especially with Alan Griffiths. He said to me, do you fancy doing some writing together? And I thought, no, I <laughs> don't. The last thing I need is to, you know, get involved with anybody, you know, when I was in a sense going through a form of divorce. Well, I said, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I played guitar uh, on the 1985 world tour with Tears um, for several months. Um, so we've known each other for quite a considerable amount of time. Roland kind of used to call me up from time to time and we used to go out and we used to discuss things and I used to play him bits and pieces that I was working on. Same, same, same. Can you go from just before the first chorus? I can. That was just before the first chorus. Yeah, I know, but okay, I wasn't ready. The day we, he came up to London, brought all his gear, set it all up, started jamming and it was like, wow. Regarding Tim Palmer, I mean, what happened there was really, I felt we needed a third person just to be the objective one, as Alan and I were doing most of the creativity. We just listened to a lot of records, and we felt that Tim Palmer's were the best sounding. All right. Yeah, I was fine. Al was terrible. We experimented with him, working with him on Late So Low, got on with him well and asked him to do the album. I'll tell you what, at the end... Okay. But what was nice about this record was the fact that we stripped it right back to just being three musicians in the studio. We wanted to keep it very much the three of us and the engineer Mark as well. So it was just literally four people in the studio the whole time, really. We didn't bring any outside session players in at all. I think it's a lot more human and a lot more emotional for that. Tim, turn down the offbeat snares. Elemental, the title track of the album, once again really emanated from a jam. No. <laughs> I suppose it's like a play on the word mental, you know. It's all in the mind. These days it's all in the mind. It's mental, it's elemental.
scrap it and start again? I think it's fair to say he has a very firm idea in his head how he wants ultimately see something. He can be sometimes... He's very critical of himself. I think that was one of the things that I tried to sort of loosen up a bit because he does like to keep going until it's perfect. When I get struck by an idea, it's like an obsession. And it, it, my whole life is, is, you know, works around this obsession. I didn't want to write songs that people could so easily say, well, that's about that and that's about that. I really wanted just to write words that kind of were ambivalent. Like magic create the What makes a man so Who put the daggers in those eyes? A lot of the time it was an atmosphere that was generating a lyric and he could change that as it went along but um, you know we, we, before we started vocals we'd, he'd always make sure that we sat down and we wrote out all the lyrics so we all were very conscious of what the song was about particularly when choosing bits of vocal you better Quite often I've been an agent in Agent of Transformation in other people's life, like Alita Adams, for instance. You know, I kind of came along and the whole next phase of Tears for Fears was based around her. They were all personal songs. But I think I didn't realize that. Well, I feel like Woman in Chains was really about my mum and dad, their relationship, the, you know, that, that power struggle. And and so after like Woman in Chains, really, and, and, and all of Sowing Seeds of Love and that kind of the spiritual element, you know, albeit I don't know how true it was, it is to what we were doing at the time. And cold, you know, kind of is the answer, really. I think it's the follow-up to Woman in Chains, really. Cold. There was um, a young lady in Germany, a, a photographer, who, um, who I didn't realise was a big fan. When we did the gig, she was trying to take a lot of shots, but again, I was just, like, t turning my face away. She sent me a note, and the uh, note said, how can someone who writes such beautiful songs be so cold, you know? So that's where the, the title comes from. Shall I work on the outro? Because there's more choruses there. I think it's a mistake a lot of people make, is when they see me on TV, they think I'm a nice guy, when I'm really a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like oh, yeah, yeah. enough. <laughs> okay. I feel that um, somebody has got to counteract the kind of the stuff that we're sold so much, you know, by the media and television, all these beauty adverts and you know the youth-orientated society and all that kind of stuff, youth culture and uh, 
everything is wonderful and everything's beautiful and the whole thrust of advertising is to do with uh, everything looking wonderful you know and 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 life's not like that so you know i mean it break it down again is it's like celebrating um the fact that you know things do end that that there is a cycle to life um and uh that's why one of the lines of the, the song is that they make no mention of the beauty of de decay and um <clears throat> What else? Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, everything in the universe is recyclable, including you.